Guys, beautiful good evening from Dubai, flying Middle East Airlines in their brand new Airbus A321 Neo in economy class all the way to Istanbul with an eight hour stopover in Beirut. Can't wait to check it out, so let's head to the gate. So I just made it to the gate and to be honest, I'm a little nervous because with airlines like Middle Eastern Airlines, you never really know how the crew is going to react with the camera. Even though I'm like always very respectful and you can barely notice it. So last time I was told off on my way from Frankfurt to Beirut, though five minutes later, another crew showed up, asked me what I was doing. And I said, I'm vlogging and reviewing. And she said, that's amazing. And if you need any help, let me know. So I really hope today is going to be a good flight. On a different note, it was really nice to see how busy Dubai airport happened to be again. Air traffic clearly seems to be picking up globally again. We then started boarding and right at the door you get to meet the most grumpy and uninspired set of crew of any airline. This has happened on all my MEA flights so far. It definitely doesn't match the new stunning cabin of MEA. So and here we are, welcome on board the brand new 321 Neo. Uh, 160 seats as you can see, like 28 in, the, uh, in business and 132 in uh, economy in a 3-3 configuration. The significant difference is when you compare it, for example, to BA, British Airways, they have the same plane with 210 seats on there. So this is 50 more than they have here on Middle Eastern Airlines. And the first impression of the cabin, it's, it's beautiful, it's stunning. Uh, let me give you a quick little seat tour because you really need to see this. Heaps of lack room, a huge screen in front of you, USB and USB-C, as well as a foldable table. So this is the recline situation right here. Really nice actually, really love it. Massive improvement to the previous uh, 320s and 330s. So um, everything looks just like spot on. And uh, currently they have seven of them. Uh, three more are about to join the fleet. They received the first NEO uh, in July. One of the few airlines that took deliveries of new planes uh, during this um, pandemic. The flight was pretty full and after MEA's lovely safety video, we were on our way to Beirut. Let's talk about the airline's in-flight entertainment. Brilliant variety of movies with an extremely responsive screen. The plane also offers in-flight Wi-Fi for reasonable prices and 10 megabytes for free. I couldn't get the internet to connect though on my flight, unfortunately. So a little bit over an hour into the flight, uh, the crew started with the meal service and first of all very glad that there is some meal service here. Uh, it's not really given uh, during uh, COVID, uh, especially there was a choice between beef and chicken. I decided to go for the chicken which looks delicious and I remember from my last flight in MEA uh, was that the food was very outstanding. So I'm going to give this one a try and then I'll let you know what it tastes like. Can I just say that this was an absolutely amazing meal. Um, mashed potatoes was super nice, smushy, like really powerful in flavors. The chicken as well, very juicy, um, very tender, um, not too dry. I mean, this must have been one of the best economy class meals I had in a very, very long time. So ever who does your catering, whether you do it, uh, get it loaded on in Dubai or you bring it with you from from Beirut is absolutely outstanding. So another thing that always puts a smile on my face is proper cutlery. No plastic nonsense, which uh, is 
great for the environment and uh, it's so much easier to eat with that proper cutlery. So, and of course, uh, Louvre review here on the uh, Neo, the 321. Um, this bird is like brand new. It was only delivered two months ago. Um, it's number five, I think, out of 10. And maybe you guys can answer this question. So when I checked on flight radar, I noticed that this plane was registered in San Marino, which is that little tiny satellite country within Italy. I'm not sure what I saw it right, but here's the screenshot. Um, if you know why and why it's not registered in, uh, in Lebanon, uh, let me know in the comment section below. But um, this is the Lou here, very spacious. Just traveled Gulf Air two weeks ago and I was in a Lou in the front of the cabin and it was so tiny, like it was really, really small. But other than that, I mean, there's nothing special about it here, uh, as you can obviously see. Anyway, so that's what it looks like. Could have been cleaner, but it's all good. All right. We then cruised through Syrian airspace, and I don't know how to feel about that. Would that be a problem for you? What was a problem for me, though? The fact that you can't use the in-flight entertainment anymore once we started our descent, which I found absolutely stupid. So, welcome to Beirut. We are on the ground now. Still takes a bit of time to disembark, I reckon. But I'm gonna take you to the lounge now where I have eight hours. And then let's see how those eight hours go until I have my connecting flight in the morning. I decide whether I'm gonna continue that vlog or not. And then if I feel all right tomorrow morning, I'll take you on that second flight uh, to Istanbul as well. So guys, welcome to Beirut. I have to transfer now. Uh, summarizing the flight, absolutely amazing hot product. The seat, the screen, the in-flight entertainment, the Wi-Fi that wasn't working, though it's there, maybe it will work eventually. Um, such an upgrade to their uh, current fleet. Incredible, amazing. Like you can't get any better than this. The leg room, the configuration, just beautiful. Um, yeah, the crew is like, I don't know, if you know Lebanese girls, you know what I mean. They are have a bit of an attitude usually, but I forgive them that. They usually don't like you, but now crew is crew, you know, there is definitely, you. it's always a miss, hit or miss with them. Uh, that's from my previous um, flight, but other than that, pretty impressive. So now let's find the lounge. So went to the transfer desk, it was so nice to me, so lovely. They checked my documents, uh, my QR codes, my COVID test, and it was so lovely. It's like, didn't even know how to react, that's how nice they were. So now we're gonna find the lounge somewhere here, which apparently, so I ask online um, whether there's a priority lounge. And uh, apparently there is, and everybody says it's really, really beautiful. So let's go and find it. And apparently they are upstairs. Eight hours, I don't know how I feel about this. 10 years ago, I would say yes, amazing, I don't care, adventure. Uh, now we're 35 almost, I'm like, really? We have the Qatar Airways Lounge. And over there, the Setter Lounge. So this is where we're going now. Looks beautiful here though, really lovely. And the Setter Lounge is actually also the lounge Middle Eastern airline uses. So, hi, how are you? There we go. Is that okay if I stay here until then? Yes. Yeah, okay. I get perfect. Wonderful. Okay. Looks pretty nice. So, there's a coffee machine, there's water, a bench. I do still feel that I have a lot of energy, and I'm sure those views are going to be amazing when the sun rises. 
So uh, let's make it a lounge experience here. Stay with me here for the night. But for now, let me take you around this beautiful land. Some croissants, some sweets, some cheese. It's gonna be my breakfast, some sandwiches, all kind of drinks, coffee machine, and some really nice open space. So I bet you during normal times, this might be actually a really beautiful place. They might even have showers here so I can get a shower before I go on my flight. I love the departure board here in particular, a lot of Damascus. Damascus, Damascus, Addis, Damascus, Adana, quite some exotic places. Really wanna to go to Syria next year. Uh, to do Syrian Airways 340, be a dream, that'd be amazing. But now let's go. I think this is where we're gonna settle for the night. Right here, I have a screen. Bit of a view over the apron or tarmac, whatever you wanna call it. I can take off that mask, there's nobody here. Oh, uh, that greasy, weird feeling you have when you were wearing a mask for like all four hours and then you take it off is just disgusting. You're never gonna get used to this. Probably gonna have a bit of a nap and try to kill some time. And then I reckon later, I'm gonna take you guys on that flight to Istanbul. How does that sound? So we get a bit of a daylight feeling as well of this cabin, this really, really beautiful cabin. Uh, amazing art product. Like, just to give you an idea, this is how good it can get. And it seems like they went for all the options, overhead screens, um, it, 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 like personal entertainment, it's a real beauty. It's a real beauty. From what I saw about the business class, I wasn't, about, I wasn't that sure about what I make of it, but the economy class, wow, amazing. I can't get any better than this on a long range. And they're also the launching customer of the XLR, which is the extra long range um, 321. So this bird, it's going to be a total game changer because I guess this is going to be the future. Single aisled, stretched airplane like the 757 was and because less crew, less expenses, more efficient and they can f go quite some distance now. Post-COVID travel will look very different and that what we saw on this plane is probably what the future is going to look like. Filming myself doing a live stream. So say, say hello to YouTube. So guys, beautiful morning from the lounge here in Beirut. I fell asleep on the couch. There was nobody here. I woke up, I was surrounded by hundreds of people. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> and I was lying there like a bum and everyone is like nicely dressed here, getting ready for their morning flights and me there. But the homeless YouTuber. It's still a two hour flight to Istanbul. Well, so let's see how the second flight compares to the first one. So we can give it a bit of a a more balanced review and see what the overall experience was like. I need a coffee now, I need a lot of coffee, so cheers. So this was my night at the lounge. Let's go and find my gate now. I feel actually pretty rested, which is a surprise because usually I'm like completely shattered after nights like this. And there we go, all the Neos. I still very much remember gate 20 because that is where my flight to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia left two years ago, one and a half years ago, actually a year ago. I flew an Airbus A330, which is sitting there in storage though, because they have the covers on the engines, but that's the bird I flew. The interesting fact is with this Airbus A330, it has no galley. It was really weirdly designed. Uh, so watch out, check out that video. So I'm at the gate. This is my bird. A nice close-up and a very interesting story. 
the 321 you see here in the back is the 10,000 to be delivered. So in, of, of the whole 320 family, which includes the 318, 19, 20, and 21. And this bird over there was the 10,000 uh, to be delivered uh, to a customer, which happened to be MEA. It's a piece of history just standing over there. My second flight pretty much continued where the first one ended. A stunning new cabin combined with the most uninspired and unfriendly crew. I took this issue to Instagram and I've asked you guys to share your experience with me you had on MEA and here are a few answers. I think the Beirut based airline has completed an amazing upgrade to their fleet and overall the product is absolutely outstanding. But you won't win your customer's heart with poorly trained crew that absolutely seems to hate their jobs. If you invest a little bit of money into their training, your airline could become one of the best within the region. That's for sure. Anyways, this was today's review of MEA, the flag carrier of Lebanon. Thank you so much for watching and please let me know what you think of today's review and whether the new 321neo will bring some change to the airlines. Guys, wherever you're off to, have a safe trip.